Hello and welcome back everyone to another exciting 3D Tutor video in which we're going to talk a little bit in regards to the Skybox setup. So I have myself a nice type of a scene set up over here and now we're going to go ahead and work on it in regards to setting ourselves up with a nice Skybox around it. Because when we go to the render scene, what you'll notice is that it doesn't actually have anything. The reason being is that we've not applied any texture. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. For us to actually do that, we'll need to make sure that we are within the shading mode, so the top section over here. Then we'll get ourselves this tab over here, which if you're not seeing the world section, just make sure to change it from object to world. This will give you this tab over here. You can zoom in and out, out of it like so and just treat it as a simple graph. So first, actually apply the texture. We just simply need to grab ourselves a background node. Let's go ahead and click Shift and A, search for background like so. Let's go ahead and add it in. And we're going to get ourselves this setup. Now, all we need to do is just simply get ourselves a texture that we use. So I often like to use day.exr texture that I often have. And we often use within our backgrounds and whatnot. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit in regards to the type of materials, the images that we need to use. But I'm just going to simply drag and drop it into here like so. Then attach it to color and attach this to the background like so. And just by doing this. We're going to get ourselves a change in color in regards to the background, but it's still not quite there in regards to the setup. The reason being is that we don't have the vector mapping. So for that, we're going to hit Shift and A. We're going to search for texture coordinate like so. And we can, if we were to just simply put this into the vector from generated, it was going to generate ourselves UVs, but it's a little bit sideways, as you can see. So we need a bit more of control over that. So what we're going to do is we're going to search for vector mapping, Shift A, and just search for vector mapping, like so. We're just going to then put it over like this. Uh, then the rotation, we're just going to use these. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is. So I think this one is going to be just simply 90 degrees. And there we go, that fixes, or actually that is all the way around. So we're going to put this as a minus 90 for the rotation. And there we go. We got ourselves a nice skybox to work with. Since this is giving us a horizontal line, we can even offset the location a little bit to get uh, different results. But keep in mind that it's most likely it's going to be stitched with two parts. So you can see at the top, it starts where this is ends and we get those kind of results. The alternative way of doing it would be to change this uh, within the image itself. We're going to basically say that it's not flat. We're going to say that it's a sphere and this is going to wrap our entire section around like so. I'm going to turn off the location back to zero within my UV mapping and we're going to get this result. Now, actually, the rotation is wrong, so I'm going to go ahead and change this back to zero to get this sort of result. So the top and the bottom is going to be perfectly set up for us. And to actually rotate it now, we're going to use the Z rotation over here to just offset where the, well, where the, there you go, where the sun is. So this is a nice setup. Keep in mind that this is not actually the rotation of a light source. I, on the scene, I still have the light source over here. So for example, I want to make sure that I align it to the setup uh, in regards to the sun itself to make sure that simply it matches the background itself. And uh, that's pretty much it in regards to the setup. We got ourselves a nice uh, way of controlling the background. If we go back to the material mode, it's going to use the defi uh, default sky box setup which is going to give us a completely different ambient lighting but if we go back onto the render view we're going to see that it's going to look differently because of the skybox that we're using now let's talk about a little bit in regards to the skybox itself in regards to what to use and what not to use this is the type of a skybox i was using the xr map and it's very nicely set up it's also as you can see quite high resolution it's actually it's going to be 8,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels in regards to the setup in order to make sure we don't see any pixels, even if you zoom in like so, we can see it like so. The other thing is that the skybox has to be either .hdri or .exr. The one that I'm showing right now is .exr. The reason being is that if we look at the top, we can see that it says RGB slash 32. Most of the images are set in either 8 bits or 16 bits. We can check that by going into within Photoshop. We can go into, for example, mode and we can see that it's 32 bits. 32 bits basically will allow you to have a greater range within your image. So even if it's a high resolution image, 
if you don't have 32 bits, it's going to be blocky. It's going to look choppy. So for example, if I were to go on to 8 bits over here, just going to go ahead and change it. We can see the drastic changes that we're getting over here. And it's not quite as visible perhaps on YouTube. But once you start zooming in, we can see the gradient is actually a bit more choppy and whatnot. I'll put up an example, a bit more of an extreme example on the top. A lot of EXR or .hdri uh, type of images will be, for example, a little bit messed up. You, they need to make sure that they use a full range of a skybox in order to make sure it's not as blocky. If it's uh, done from 8-bit or 16-bit to 32-bit, they might have a bit of an issue in regards to the blockiness. If you'd like to check, for example, if it's using full range, what you can do is you can go on to levels over here. By clicking on it, we can see that it's using all of this range. And basically, the graph shows on the left-hand side the darkest points and on the right-hand side the brightest points. Although you can see that this part over here is barely being used, we can, for example, do it like so to make sure that it's using full range within our setup. Even so, we can see the small part. There is a small part, for example, for the sun uh, that will use the full range. And if you're seeing the, well, I can show you an example. A good example would be if I were to change this mode to 6-bit and then change it back to 32-bit, you can see that you'll be able to see the drastic change. So let me just go ahead and do that. Go ahead and uh, change this. I'll make sure to not merge. Uh, then we can go back onto levels. We can see that this is the crop that we're getting now. It's actually trying to, attempting to convert to 8 bits, all of this color information. But now, once we go back onto 32 bits, we'll see the drastic change. And now we can see that this part over here on the right side is completely gone. So you have to be very careful with that. I'm going to go ahead and go back. A way to elevate that or kind of mediate that, what you can do is you can just drag the range a little bit more to the left to make sure it encompasses the full color range and tries to kind of spread everything out evenly. And then I recommend you to lower the middle one, which is responsible for the contrast. By lowering this down, you'll get a much nicer gradient. And again, I'm not really sure if it's visible within a video, but it just helps to elevate between the sharpness of the parts and yeah just make sure you use the right type of setup or a skybox if you're using it only for an image for example if you're setting up with a transparent background and you just want the render to have a nice ambient lighting that sort of stuff the quality the resolution does not matter for the skybox as it's only going to be basic reflections so for example the default reflection is actually quite low resolution and I think, I believe that's why it's blurring everything out in the background. So yeah, that's going to be it from this video. I really hope you enjoy the content. If you like these sort of videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel as we have tutorials coming up uh, pretty much every week on Mondays. Also, if you can leave a like and comment on our video, it will help us greatly with the algorithm especially. We also do online courses, which teaches you the entire process of going from scratch to finish in Blender taking upon projects that help you to learn new and exciting techniques and just polishing up your skills. We also are creating geometry nodes to help you with the creative process to automate. So for example, in this part over here, we have a nice grass setup. You can get those kind of uh, nodes or actually even this vine over here that's super nice to draw. You can get these type of nodes on our channel as well. So yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching and happy modeling everyone.